Today we are going to start from tutorial 3 and this will be global object in Node.js. So this tutorial assumes that you have knowledge about functions in Node.js. That is why functions in Node.js is covered in tutorial 2, the tutorial immediately preceding this very tutorial. So if you've not done that tutorial, then I recommend you go back to do tutorial 2. It's very short and also very easy. So do it and then come back to this one. But if you have knowledge of functions, how to write functions in JavaScript or Node.js, then you can continue in this tutorial. I use JavaScript and Node.js interchangeably because both of them actually use a, a similar syntax. I'm going to explain this clearly at a different time. So what are global objects in Node.js? But before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. Click on the subscribe button below this video so that you get notified when a new lesson is made and also you'll be free to ask questions to leave a comment to ask for recommend or support if you have some challenges in writing programs so just click on the subscribe button else also you motivate me to continue making this lesson for free for you so what are global objects global objects are some pieces of codes that has been provided for us to use they are tools that are there are objects that has been written for us so Certain objects are provided by Node.js to help us perform certain operations. These are called global objects. You can just use them. So we are going to look uh, use a few of these global objects, and I'm also going to show you a directory containing a list of all the global objects. Now, one of them, the first two we are going to discuss is the DIR name and the file name. What does it mean? If you want to get the name of the current directory containing the program code that you are executing, then you can use DIR name. So let's see how we can use DIR name this time. Let's just say we want to print out the current directory, we want to view what the output of DIR name is going to be. So let's use console.log and just say double underscore DIR name, and it's just as simple as that, and just uh, save and then simply come here to run it. Oh, sorry, this is. So you can see that it says D document node.js tutorial. That is actually where this code is residing, right? Good. So that is the error name. It gives you the current directory. So it's basically the same in Windows when you say something like uh, in command prompt, for instance, let's say command prompt. It's the same as saying uh, uh, dir. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's not the same as uh, saying dir. Pwd. Um, okay. Okay. So I can't figure out equivalent in Windows. I'm going to check for it later. So this is how to get a current directory. Let's now look at another one. This one with the file name gives you the name of the file that you are currently executing. So file name. So save it and then go to execute so now the file name gives you the absolute path to the file so now you can see that it adds the path which is a directory and as well as the file name so it appends the file name to the to the previous directory that was printed out so play around with it and see how it works let's now get to the interesting part and that is the set timeout uh, object the set timeout object is actually used to introduce a delay before a function is executed. So the set timeout takes a function and a delay in milliseconds, right? So we have a function that has to execute, but before that function is executed, it has to delay for some for some time. So let's take for instance we have this function, hello my friend. I'm going to simply copy this function, this function that says hello my friend, and I'm simply going to copy it and paste. Now, if this function executes, it's going to display hello, my friend. So I'm going to just call this function, say hello, and I'm going to execute it. If I execute it, it immediately, well, you can use CLS to play your, uh, your console, CLS plays the console. So if I execute this function, let's say, you can see that it displays hello, my friend, immediately. 
But now, if I use the, the site timeout uh, object, then I'll be able to delay this function execution for a period of time. So let's delay the function execution for maybe three seconds. Three seconds is 3000 milliseconds. So let's say set timeout, set timeout. So, so set timeout takes the name of the function, and this, in this case, the name of the function is say hello, and duration is 3000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to three uh, seconds, and I'm going to now execute it. Now, it, now I want you to take note that it's going to delay before it executes. So, so let's see. Waiting for three seconds. Ping, pom, pom, pom. Yeah. So you can see it, it displays after three seconds. That is fine. That is how set timeout works. It takes a function, delays it, and then executes it. Now, more interesting is the set interval object. Now, the set interval object uh, display uh, runs a function continuously at a given interval of time. All right, so let's say we have this function. So basically, let's use the same function, but this time, instead of using set timeout, let's just replace it with set interval, right? Good, uh, set interval, okay, fine. So now I'm going to reduce this to two, two seconds. After two seconds, I want it to execute. So it will keep executing after every two seconds, right? Right. So let's run it and see. So we are talking about the set interval. Take note of the different. Take note the difference between set timeout and the set interval. Let me make some a little room here. So if I run this code, so you can see after two seconds it executes. After another two seconds it executes. After another two seconds it executes. After another two seconds it executes continuously. For you to stop it, now you press Ctrl C on your keyboard and it stops. Now this is how the set interval works. Now let's make it a little more interesting by introducing the client interval. And client interval uh, takes a timer as a parameter. Now I want you to understand exactly what is happening here. The set interval is a global object, is also a global function. You already know that function returns a value. Now when you execute the set interval, uh, function like we've executed it, it actually returns a value and that value is called a timer or it is a timer object. So in this case, we are not assigning this return value to anything, but we can actually assign it to something like this. And that is perfectly okay. So now when the global object is, uh, this set interval is running, you, you may not have option to work on this uh, terminal or this console. So you can programmatically stop the timer. Yeah, so this execution that we stopped here by pressing Ctrl C, you can stop it programmatically. Let's see how it works. In this case, we are going to write a function that will clear it, uh, will be displaying um, a message on the screen after every one second. But once it gets to 10 seconds, it would clear the timer. So how to do it? The first thing you do, you, you assign a timer like this to the set interval, return value of the set interval function, and then you use a, a loop to check, or you use an if statement to check when the timer counts up to uh, 10 milliseconds, and then you stop it. Let me paste it so that it becomes clearer as we go. So now we have this function, right? Good. So this function says time is equal to zero. So at the point, the say hello function starts it is zero. Once this function starts, we increment the time by one. And this increment is takes in seconds. Okay. So we now do console.log. It now say one second have elapsed. Now for each execution, it, it say it tries to check whether the time is up to 10. So if not, it simply runs it again also increment the timer so this gradually until the timer becomes 10 all right so let's now use the set interval to run this function and this time we are assigning the return value to a timer all right so let's see so i'm going to say timer is equal to set interval oh sorry this is not happening 
sites interval. Mm -hmm. Hmm, this is bullshit, so it's just messing up. Okay, so I'm going to just delete the uh, use backspace to delete. Okay. <coughs> Alright, so this time I'm going to say say hello is name of the function and I'm going to say uh, how many milliseconds? One uh, millisecond. So what is going to happen is once uh, this this function this code executes that interval it starts executing. What is going to happen is that this function will start executing, but it will also be checking when the time gets to ten, and when it gets to ten, it stops the timer using the clock interval. Right. So let's see. So I'm going to first clear my screen. Remember that all this code is written for you, so uh, use them as you want. So, so let's see. Let's first use uh, file save, or you can use Control uh, S to save. And we are going to execute this. So let's see. Now it starts running. One second, two seconds, three, four, five. We want to see that it gets to ten seconds, and then it terminates, as you can see. All right. So it gets 11 seconds because this, uh, it executes once one more time after it gets to 10 seconds. So basically what we are doing here is that this time here, we are capturing it inside the console.log uh, line of uh, statement. So each, each time we increment the time, we actually display uh, here. So I'd like to recommend you take some time to to run this code, change up things. For instance, you can change this time to something else, maybe five, to see how it works. Change this timer to something else, maybe to to three thousand or so. Play around with it so that you get used to it. There are many other global objects you need to know. So I'm going to display uh, another JS slash API slash global HTML. So you can see a list of global objects that you can actually use. So we've used a few of them. And as we move ahead in this tutorial, you come you come to understand how to use some of these global objects. We can't cover everything at this point, but I want to let you know that there are global objects that you can actually use. So that in case we are using it later, it becomes a little bit clear to you. The procedure page is provided for you in the description box. This is a procedure page, so you can actually find uh, the procedure we've been following at this point because this is procedure based lesson. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'll, I'll stop here. Remind you also to subscribe, like this video and also share it. And leave a comment if you have some challenges in writing or following my tutorials. So we we'll see you in the next lesson.